I'm reviewing the Starbosa Variable Extension Camera Adapter. So, if you have a T-ring for your camera, it allows you to take off your interchangeable lens, put this T-ring on your camera, it has standard threading on it, and then you can attach things to that. So, the most common thing to attach is an eyepiece adapter like this. Um, and that eyepiece adapter will screw in here and it allows you to simply put your camera in place of an eyepiece. And so that is called prime focus, where essentially you are just using the telescope as a long lens on your camera. Now, where it gets interesting is this guy here that extends, and so you have variable extension, but it also has a spot inside here to put an eyepiece in. And so you can fix an eyepiece into this guy and then use that eyepiece in your telescope and then project from the eyepiece into your camera. And this allows you to get a lot more magnification, for example. So for planetary imaging, that's very useful um, because you're looking at very small objects and so you need a lot of magnification. I was sent this kit for free to review as part of the Amazon Vine program. They have no editorial control over what I say and they have not paid me for it, but I did receive this for free to review. So you can buy this kit with a couple of different T adapters for different types of cameras and it's compatible with any T-ring adapter for a camera. So if you have a camera that this kit doesn't support, you can buy your own T-ring and use it with the rest of the parts. Um, also, this little eyepiece thing here is, you know, it's a T2 threading, so that's also, you know, widely interchangeable with any other parts that uses the T2 threading, as are these guys. So there's two pieces here, and you don't have to take them apart to make use of them, but I'm going to do that. Um, just for demonstrational purposes. Basically, these two retaining screws go into these two grooves, and so you can take this piece and separate it from that piece. Um, and you put an eyepiece in here. So you can do a short eyepiece, or this is the longest eyepiece I own, and I found that even this eyepiece will fit. Um, you know, it's close, but it fits in there. Um, and so this screw will retain the eyepiece and this guy will screw in here, and you might want to screw that in before you retain the eyepiece, because I found, in this case, it kind of hits the eyepiece, so I've re relaxed this, I screw this in all the way, and it's pushing that eyepiece up just slightly. So when that's fully in there, you know, that's as far as the eyepiece comes up. And you could take the eye cup off, it actually kind of blocks light around the edge and kind of holds it in place, so I'm leaving it in. Um, and I'm tightening that so the eyepiece won't fall out. And so now you can put this guy back on. Now you could put the eyepiece in through this guy, so it's not necessary to take this out to do that procedure, but I think it makes it easier to see what's going on. And just when you put it back in, you want to make sure these screws go into those grooves. And that's the variable part here. So this allows you to kind of get a little bit of focus and control with your camera to that eyepiece. And I'm going to play with it and see how important that is. Um, and then, of course, you put this onto your camera adapter, and then that whole thing goes into the eyepiece. So, you know, with the eyepiece and all this metal, it does have a little heft here, and so that might affect how it mounts to your telescope. But I'm going to go and uh, take some pictures with this thing and see how well it works. So this entire package with a large eyepiece inside of it is clocking in at 353 grams. And if you're looking, that's a 0.7 pounds or 12.5 ounces. So it's, you know, it's adding a significant amount of weight to your camera that's attached to your telescope. So with my camera body, this guy's clocking in at 1.6 pounds, 758 grams. So I took one image using the eyepiece in here, and then I took another image prime focus just with this guy here, and I was surprised that they were just about exactly the same magnification. And that might be having to do with the distance that this adds in there. Um, when it's not there, this is a lot closer to the optical path of the camera. Um, but what I'm going to do is put a different eyepiece. So this is a um, 26 millimeter eyepiece. I'm going to put in like a 10 millimeter eyepiece. It should have a significant magnification change and try that. Okay, so this is an 11 millimeter eyepiece, which I should expect to have a significant different magnification here. And it's a relatively short eyepiece, so getting it down in there, I had to kind of basically drop it and let it fall into place. 
but that's down there. Um, I think I'll be trying to move the camera a little bit closer, you know, try to get the camera as close as possible to that, and we'll take a picture with this and see what happens. So what I found with my Mead ETX90, which has a focal length of uh, 1250 millimeters, is that the view with simply the camera directly attached to the telescope, just with the eyepiece adapter like that, was very similar in size to an eyepiece, the 26 millimeter eyepiece, inside of the eyepiece holder. Now, when I swapped out to the 11 millimeter eyepiece, which is a significant amount of magnification, probably more than you really want to be using with that telescope, um, then the view through the camera and this guy here was pretty equivalent to what I was seeing you know, with my eye through the, um, through the eyepiece. And so my you know, rule of thumb here is that this particular setup with an eyepiece will give your camera a view pretty similar in size to what you're seeing with the eyepiece. Um, now, the problem I ran into is I was being starved for light. Um, I have, you know, this is a 90 millimeter aperture here, which is not a small telescope, but it's not a super big one. And I was having to crank up the ISO and crank up the exposure time in the daytime to get pictures to come out. Um, and so I never had a circular image in the camera sensor. It was always filling my crop sensor um, with the light from these eyepieces, and so even at the at the shortest, you know, closest aspect here, um, it was always um, fully covering that crop sensor, and so there was probably light being lost on the outside a little bit. Um, so I think the biggest downside here is managing your aperture size and how much light you have available to your camera um, to make this work. Right. I took this out with my Mead telescope and my digital camera and took some pictures with both the 26 millimeter eyepiece that came with my telescope and this TrueView 10 millimeter eyepiece, or sorry, 11 millimeter eyepiece. Um, so with this guy here, and I also took some pictures that were just prime focus, so basically just, you know, camera attached directly using just the um, telescope without any eyepieces in here. Um, so overall, my best results were taken using this adapter, just prime focus with no eyepiece attached inside of it. Um, that had the sharpest results of the moon. And the 26 millimeter eyepiece did not give me a large gain in zoom over that, um, just because of the way this interacts with my telescope. Now, I did find that if I extended it or put it down a little bit, you know, like this, I could get maybe one and a half zoom just by pulling it in and out a little bit. So I could get a little bit of an adjustment in field of view with that adjustment there. Now, when I switched to the 11 millimeter eyepiece, I got a significant zoom increase. So I, you know, I put this guy inside and we're zooming into the moon here. The downside is we get a lot less light out of this guy. And so I was having to make the exposure time go down and take the ISO and crank the ISO way up. You know, so in, you know, compared to the prime focus, we were losing a whole bunch of light and making it difficult to take good pictures with my digital camera um, with such a small 11 millimeter eyepiece here. Because there's quite a bit of zoom there. But you can see, you know, we're zooming in on the moon a lot better. Now, I tried taking pictures of planets. Um, and so with just this and the telescope, you could take a picture of Saturn, but it was really small. You know, it, it was just too small to really be super useful. You could see the rings, so that's about as, as well as you can do with the eyepiece. Now, I tried taking a picture of Saturn with this guy for a lot more zoom, and I was not able to do that. Now, I never found it in the viewfinder of my camera. I could see it in this guy if I was using the eyepiece alone, but it was very faint. Um, and so I'm not certain if the problem was one of not targeting, because you know it's very hard to target with such a high magnification, or if it was that my camera simply couldn't detect it. You know, I used my spiral search, I tried many times, but I was never able to image a planet using the high magnification eyepiece. Um, so, I think the 
the biggest advantage here is just prime focus imaging um, without an eyepiece attached. But if you have a bright target like the moon, you can do a significant magnification that you can't get without an eyepiece in there. Um, so if you're looking to zoom in on the moon, this is something you might want to have in your arsenal to give that a shot. Um, but for dimmer targets, I don't know if you're going to be able to make use of an eyepiece with enough magnification just because you're losing a lot of that light. Now you can always use this guy and the T-ring without the variable zoom here and eyepiece holder if you'd like to use prime focus directly. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of parts to this kit and you can use them interchangeably, you know, this part and that part, um, separate from each other or all together with an eyepiece. Um, but I found that where I really want this to work is with a magnification that was a lot better than prime focus and I wasn't getting enough light for anything other than the moon with that particular usage.